just need to catch my breath after that last piece. We do thank uh, Shona and the band for their prelude this morning. And a special thank you to our multi-talented conductor today, Kathy. Not only can she uh, do a great job on vocal music, uh, she handles the band pretty well too. So, thank you. Welcome to everyone this morning worshiping with us, whether you're in person or online. We do welcome you today, Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry of Jesus. Just a few announcements for you today, tomorrow evening, the Women's Sacred Circle meeting uh, in the foyer at 7 o'clock. Bible study this week, Monday, Thursday, we will have a special guest in Corin, and uh, I would invite you to join us there. Easter weekend next week, Good Friday, our service here at 10 o'clock. Something new for this year, a sunrise service. Now, the sun comes up earlier than 8.15, but we'll be there at 8.15 in Tournament Park, which is in our neighborhood here, followed by hot cross buns and an egg hunt here at 9 o'clock, and then our Easter worship at 10 o'clock. Final announcement is April 6th, the Choral Convocation, featuring six songster brigades from... Uh, across North America and, of course, the international staff songsters. On the Sunday morning, worshiping here with us will be the international staff songsters and the Canadian staff songsters. Uh, and that will be at 10 o'clock with a musical at uh, 1.30. Those are our announcements for today. I would just invite you to bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather on this Palm Sunday, we remember the triumphant entry of your Son, Jesus Christ. We reflect on the journey that led Jesus to make the ultimate sacrifice for us. As we enter Holy Week, prepare our hearts to journey with Jesus through his passion, death, and resurrection. We pray for our church and the many needs of our congregation. Bless every aspect of our service today, we pray. Amen. Our opening song will be uh, led by the band. I would invite you to uh, rise and uh, sing with us, and we will sing the two verses right through.
in the highest. Palm Sunday is one of my favorite days of the year, and I just love uh, just being able to embrace our inner child by waving the palm fronds, and uh, our opening, our second song of this morning, actually, is this beautiful hymn of children, Children of Jerusalem. So once again, please stand as we sing this straight through with the band. be seated.
On this Sunday, we focus upon how Jesus intentionally journeys toward the cross. In my personal prayer time this morning, I was reading a book by Joyce Rupp, and she talked about the courage Jesus must have had to ride on that donkey, knowing what was going to be coming by the end of the week. And so it's important on this day of celebration that we do step back for a moment to offer our prayer of confession. On this Palm Sunday, O oh God, we recognize how we are like the crowds. We reflect on our fickleness, how we pledge our devotion one moment and turn our backs on the next. We go from shouting, Hosanna, save us, to crucify him. We declare that we love our neighbors, and then we turn our backs on the homeless and hungry in our communities. We speak up for change and justice in one breath, and then continue unjust practices in our daily lives by what we consume and the needs we ignore. Forgive us, O oh God, for the times we are half-hearted believers. Forgive us for when we are partial justice warriors. Forgive us when we tire easily and we forget. Forgive us, restore us, and renew us for the journey of faith so that we might become whole people who live wholly into your vision of new life. In the name of Christ, who lived into the fullness of humanity and who taught us to pray. And please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we will sing a song of response. Lord, how I love you.
So just before David comes to uh, provide our prayer for the, our tithes and offering, we want to have a, just a time to pause and uh, pray for Caitlin, if she can come up here to stand with me at this time. And we want to celebrate the young people that uh, the Lord has blessed York Minster with. Uh, the Divisional Youth Band and Divisional Youth Chorus, Soul and Solidarity, are in Pittsburgh this weekend with uh, Percy's daughters, Mabel Lane and Alexis. And uh, they are having a very full time. They arrived at 1 a.m. at Camp Allegheny on Friday night. They were on the bus at 8 a.m. on Saturday. And uh, they had a full day of workshops with the Pittsburgh Temple Youth and providing a concert. Uh, they got back at about midnight and are back on the bus again at 8 a.m. this morning. I think Marcus and Alexandria know the wisdom of keeping kids busy and letting them become naturally tired. But uh, while they are uh, there today, they'll also be offering concerts at a senior's home in an ARC. And so it really is amazing what they have done. Uh, we want to thank the band members that are here today because a significant number of our young people are away, and so we celebrate them. But we want to particularly celebrate Caitlin this morning, as tomorrow, is it you leave? Tuesday. Tuesday, she leaves for Columbia. She has been handpicked to be on the U18 national softball team to go to the World Softball Championship in Colombia. Amazing. And so, Caitlin, we claim this verse for you today from Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 2. So then, let's also run the race that is laid out in front of us, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up, and fix our eyes on Jesus, faith's pioneer and perfecter. He endured the cross, ignoring the shame for the sake of the joy that was laid out in front of him, and sat down at the right side of God's throne. And so here is a cloud of witnesses. We are going to be holding you close in our hearts while you are away. And God has given you a unique, cha unique talent, but you have invested a tremendous amount of energy and time and dedication to have that talent be developed to such an extent that you have. And we're all really proud of you. So let's have a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for Caitlin, and we thank you for how your light shines out of her. We thank you for the dedication she shows to her sport. We thank you that for the perseverance you have given her to not give up on the days her body is really tired, but she keeps on pushing. And so we pray, Lord, a hedge of protection around her as she goes with other young women to Columbia. We pray that you will keep them all safe. We pray, Lord, that she will realize that prayer of Eric Little. When I run, I feel his pleasure. So every time she swings that bat and hits the ball and throws the ball, may she feel your pleasure with her. And we pray, Lord, that you will guard her heart as it will be with a heavy heart that she heads away. But guard her heart and know that everyone at home loves her and is cheering her on. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Just a reminder for those worshiping online, if you would like to be a part of this uh, uh, component of our worship, the links are on both Facebook and YouTube. Let us pray. Lord, we stand in awe of your infinite sacrifice. As we give our tithes and offerings, help us to remember that our sacrifices, no matter how small, are echoes of your great love for us. Let our giving reflect the deep impact of your selfless sacrifice. We pray in your name. Amen.
We're going to join in worship now and sing The Servant King with the help of the piano. Please stand as we sing. Please be seated. Thank you very much, Shona. Really appreciate uh, your uh, helping in worship this morning. The scripture for today is Mark chapter 11, verses uh, 1 to 11. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. Hear the word of the Lord. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany, 
Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will see a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are doing this, say, the Lord needs it and will send it back shortly. They went and found the colt outside in the street, tied in a doorway. As they untied it, some people were standing there and asked, why are you doing this, untying that colt? They answered, as Jesus told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus, as he came to Jerusalem, went into the temple. He looked around and saw everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My wife's not here right now, um, but she will agree with me. There's one thing that I really, really enjoy in life, and that is a celebration. A celebration of any kind, whether it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, whether uh, when my dad was alive and the Argos finally won a Grey Cup, we would celebrate. My dad had his own special brand of chip dip that he'd buy when we used to watch those football games, and we celebrated. I don't know how to dance, I don't drink alcohol, but we still found a way to really, really enjoy ourselves during those times. But sometimes, the celebration became a little more important than the event that we were celebrating. Sometimes I got so caught up in Christmas presents that I forgot Christ's presence that was coming into the world. Sometimes I was so caught up with my children at Easter, finding ways that I could hide the chocolate eggs, those beautiful chocolate eggs that June made for us, thank you so much, that I prepared for the chocolate Easter egg hunt, but forgot to prepare myself for Easter. We're going to look this morning just briefly at people who were getting ready to celebrate. And we're going to see what really happened in terms of their celebration. Did they celebrate so much that they forgot what the celebration was all about? We're going to look at hope in three different ways this morning. Hope of the crowds. Hope of Jesus, and then what is our hope for today? So we begin with hope for the crowds. Jerusalem was absolutely bustling. I took a look at it uh, previously, and Jerusalem all year round would have about 40,000 people. But when they had big celebrations, the city absolutely swelled to the bursting point. They swelled to over 200,000 people that were getting ready for Passover. And that's where we find ourselves today as Jesus is making his way into Jerusalem. For those of you who go to Old Orchard, 
It's very similar. During the year, there's only 6,000 people, at least when I was a kid. 6,000 people. But when summertime comes, the crowds just expand to a vast number. So just imagine. There are throngs of people coming and making their way into Jerusalem. It's not just Jesus. And there is anticipation. Pilate is coming to be in Jerusalem to make sure everything goes well and that the crowds are kept in order. Herod has come down into Jerusalem for this time and now Jesus is making his way into Jerusalem. And Jesus is following a prophecy that we see in Zechariah 9 and 9. Behold, Your king comes riding on a donkey, a colt of a donkey. And people are excited. They're shouting, they're screaming, they're saying, Hosanna. And what Hosanna means is save us. They are hoping that Jesus is a military Messiah and that the yoke of oppression will be released from them. They will no longer be paying taxes to a foreign government. They will no longer be following orders from someone that is not from their own country. They are hoping and praying that the Jesus that comes is a military Messiah that will cleanse the temple, that things that were not in order will be in order. How many times do we pray that when a new officer comes? I really hope they can shape things up. I really hope that we can do some things that we used to do in the army. Well, I think it's the other way around when I came to York Minster. I have come to a core that loves Jesus and celebrates that in the way that I am used to, with a band and a songsters, but we give our glory always to the Lord. Thank you, York Minster. But they were hoping for Jesus to come to throw the Romans off, to clean up the sanctuary, that place where there was forgiveness and there was peace. The temple, that place where there was the nexus between heaven and earth. They were hoping beyond all hope And they were shouting for the return of the kingdom of their father, David. But what they were hoping for and what they were shouting for was not the hope that Jesus had. When Jesus had the colt brought to him and the disciples threw their cloaks over the colt And Jesus sat on it and made his way into Jerusalem. What was Jesus' hope? Well, we can look back in Mark chapter 10 and verses 45. This is the hope that Jesus had. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The hope of Jesus was to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Yes, like the crowds, Jesus was going to come into Jerusalem and into the temple if we read on further in Mark, and Jesus was going to cleanse the temple that place that was meant for prayer, that had become a marketplace, was once again going to become a place of prayer. It was also going to once again be a place of forgiveness. 
But that nexus between heaven and earth was no longer going to be just the temple. It was going to be Jesus, his very self, and he would be the representative of God to the people. And Jesus would give his life as a ransom for many. So we've talked about the hope of the crowd. We've talked about Jesus' hope coming and riding into Jerusalem. But what is our hope this morning? Lord knows we need hope. There are in this world wars and rumors of wars. There is sickness. There is death. There is famine. There is persecution. People are being treated in ways that should never happen, that are a crime that we don't even know about at times. Some people are going through situations that are almost too hard to imagine and too hard to bear. But Jesus, the suffering servant, who in Mark says, the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to serve, but to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus wants to offer us hope where there doesn't seem to be any hope. Jesus goes the way of the cross so that when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we can be assured that God goes with us and knows the pain and the sorrow that we are going to go through there are going to be times of disorientation. When we cry out, Lord, how long do we have to go through these situations? How long before you redeem us and send us the hope that you promised us? But As we follow Jesus into these dark valleys, there is a time of transformation that allows us to say we are not alone, that God has not left us or forsaken us, and that God is with us even in the very pit of hopelessness. So the crowds at the beginning of the triumphal entry are crying out for a military Messiah they do not understand and can't even comprehend. And Jesus shows them a different kind of hope, a hope of a different kind, That means the sorrow and pain that we are going through can be redeemed, can be cleansed, and we can go forth and walk with him in his spirit and his truth. The question is, will we accept the peace that God offers us, even if it means going through the valley that causes us suffering and pain. And that's the song we're going to sing sort of as a time of reflection. Do you need to lay your situations, your crises in front of the Lord and ask him to carry you through these difficult times? My peace Christ will give unto you. And we will sing that this morning. My peace... Peace
I give unto you. It's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live, my peace I give. Unto you, my peace I give unto you. It's a love that the world cannot give. It's a love that the world cannot God, our Heavenly Father, sometimes we get so caught up in celebration, in shouts of Hosanna, and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, that we forget why you came. You came not to be served, but to serve, and to give your life as a ransom for many so that we could have peace, so that we could have love, so that we could have hope. Lord, we lay down our burdens at your feet today and we pray for your peace, hope, and love in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now we're going to call Major Pam Goodyear, who will lead us in the conclusion of our meeting. And as the band can come forward, please. Well, we do love a celebration, don't we? Especially when we get to celebrate our Lord. But we've been reminded this morning about the, that fickle crowd. And I don't know about you, but I often wonder where would I have been? Would I have been raising my palm branches as he rode into Jerusalem or throwing my cloak on the ground? But where would I have been on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Friday? Would I have been following that crowd that yelled, give us Barabbas or crucify him? It's a challenge for us, isn't it? as we go out from here today, as we've celebrated. You see, I think the Lord looked at that crowd. He knew what lay ahead of him. And yet we're told in scripture, he looked and he loved them. And he looks at us and he loves us, even when we fail him. And so now we set our eyes towards Calvary and focus on his great sacrifice of love for each one of us. We're going to stand together and sing when Jesus looked o'er Galilee, 
so blue and calm and fair, upon her bosom could he see a cross reflected there. He knew from the moment he started his ministry, Jesus knew what lay ahead of him. And yet he willingly went to the cross for each one of us. Oh, that we would respond as he calls us this day. benediction this morning is taken from Philippians 2 verses 5 to 11 and it's a challenge for each of us as we are reminded of what Christ did for us and it says in your relationships with one another have the same mindset of Christ Jesus who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage rather He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. (laughs) 